hello everyone good morning good afternoon good evening a very warm welcome to our webinar uh, connecting factories seamlessly with azure and mqtt i'm jayshree hegde moderating this webinar allow me to introduce you all to our panelists for today ravi subramanian who is director of uh, industry solutions manufacturing at hive mq and kutsai menditharetsa who is the developer advocate at hive mq welcome ravi welcome kutsai thank you for taking time today to present this webinar by the way we are all super excited about this webinar because ravi and kudzai will be presenting use cases around connecting factories using a full featured mqtt broker and azure services along with a super cool demo featuring our tech uh, partner opto 22's grurio and opto turbine so stay tuned with us before we kick off uh, the session uh, i would like to thank and give a lot of hugs to our partner opto 22 for sharing the technology for our demo and lastly housekeeping pointers so this session is being recorded and we will share the recording and uh, the slides uh, over email and um, feel free to use the control pod um, to say hi to each other uh, use the q and a pod to ask uh, questions to our panelists and we will be uh, taking up all the uh, Q&A during the uh, last session uh, of this webinar. At the end of the session, there will be a poll running and an exit survey running. I request you all to participate. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Ravi. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jayashree. So uh, welcome, everybody, to our um, monthly webinar. And I'm very, very excited to present to you the, the various uh, use cases that uh, fully featured broker, MQTT-based broker, can support to support various use cases on the Azure cloud. So during the next um, 10 minutes or so, in my case, and then uh, next 40 minutes total, we'll be kind of like taking you through the various uh, IoT architectures in general and specific role of the message uh, queues uh, in the architectures uh, with some practical examples. Uh, we'll kind of like go over like um, how like the, the broker specifically HiveMQ, for example, helps moderate the data, if you will, uh, back and forth from your prem to the cloud into various Azure uh, services for to support various use cases. So that's uh, that's what we'll go through in the next uh, 40 minutes or so. All right, uh, so for, let's start with the business objectives, right? I mean, if you look at in a factory setting, the, the usual things that people are really concerned about, why they want to go do digitization, why they want to do industry 4.0 is A, they want to improve their factory efficiency overall, right? They want to optimize the plant logistics. Um, they want to gain more flexibility in their manufacturing process, be able to do things uh, more with less, if you will, and uh, especially in this day and age with COVID, COVID nineteen, and then the spike in the uh, in the supply and the supply chain issues uh, that people are having, now is the time to optimize, right? And then, find, last but not least, to be able to measure and increase their overall e equipment effectiveness, right, through various methods. So those are the reasons why um, digitization is becoming like more and more. Kind of like reality and uh, an industry 4.0 adoption has uh, grown in leaps and bounds. So when you look at um, MQTT and what uh, it really brings to the table, right? Um, MQTT actually started in uh, in I think the late 90s, I believe, um, specifically for the oil and gas use case where there were unreliable and hostile environments in terms of communication where the networks were unreliable. So the whole reason why MQTT was created is to work in these unreliable uh, systems, if you will, to be able to bring data in a reliable way to the to wherever it needs to go to either to your on premise enterprise or to the cloud, right? So it's a pub sub based uh, messaging protocol that is designed specifically for fast and reliable data communication over unreliable networks. Uh, unreliable networks include like uh, connectivity issues where there is connectivity issues, there is bandwidth issues, as well as like uh, limited battery power and so on and so forth. It's built on, MQ, on, on H, uh, TCP IP, and it's very ideal for IoT and specifically for industrial IoT. So when you look at like um, an enterprise MQTT broker, so like how, how can that a broker, what, what role does it play, right? Specifically looking at a manufacturing environment, right? So you have um, different uh, devices as a part of your OT system, as we call it, like uh, 
your smart devices, your sensors, your gateways, PLCs, and other devices that have a lot of information, right? And the obviously to be able to gain insights from that, you need to be able to harness the data. And then you need to be able to share that information with uh, parts of your IT systems, right? Either your MES system or, uh, or, um, or other uh, historians, analytics platforms, either on premise or on the, on the cloud. So in other words, there has to be a, uh, an ITOT convergence where the data can come together, the data silos need to be broken. And so you can use this data for, um, for doing things uh, that you would, wouldn't have been normally, it wouldn't have no, not been normally possible, right? So that's the kind of like the realization of the industry 4.0 and, um, and, the, and the path to using data to, to digitize your entire factory floor, right? So that you can achieve those business objectives that we talked about. And, and an enterprise broker kind of like acts as that, like that heart that brings everything together and provides a common structure to be able to bring the data in a way that that it can make it available in a in a in a reliable in a secure in a scalable fashion to be able to realize these use cases so again we're not talking about the advantages of an enterprise broker again you know you can you can cluster the data right um so to ensure that there is high data availability the cluster can grow or shrink uh, without losing data if you will you can maintain extremely fast throughput without um, without without too much latency. Obviously, there will be some latency, but you can minimize it. Security is a key thing, especially when uh, in this day and age, um, you know, obviously offering like things like TLS, uh, web sockets, and other state-of-the-art um, security protocols is, is key. And again, MQTT, which is a pub-sub-based architecture, kind of lends itself to a lot of these things um, to allow uh, data to be shared bidirectionally and also like be to be able to share it with other systems, not just the uh, cloud-based systems, but other systems, if um, if that needs to be extended to to be to be able to realize other use cases. So that's kind of like what uh, a, a fully featured MQTT broker provides. So I, I, now let's kind of like start looking at some of the architectures, right? Um, and examples of um, like use cases. Let's take like an interfactory scenario, right? So you have like different fab different um, factories within an organization. Um, let's say factory one is some, some kind of a production, factory two is uh, production of like a different kinds of equipment. And then factory three is a power gen factory, right? Um, the reason why they need, these need to be bridged, uh, one of the reuse cases is that um, you have process engineers that want to analyze the process data, maybe in a, in a particular factory, right? And then they want to kind of like make some runtime changes. And to be, to be able to do that, they want to look at like how similar process data is working in the other factory locations so that they can kind of like make, uh, like optimize their process based on that, right? And for this to happen, obviously the, the performance data from the various factory needs to be, needs to flow somewhere in, in a, again, in a, because these factories are going to be at different locations in the world. So it has to kind of like be, be combined in a reliable, scalable, secure fashion, if you will. And uh, so, and that's kind of like where a, a broker comes into play, right? And then it needs to be bridged to a location. In this case, we are, we are taking Azure um, as an example, right? So it needs to be bridged through the event hub to say, for example, a data explorer, where all of this data comes through. And so it can be then analyzed. And so the factory process engineers can figure out how to optimize their, um, their process, right? Another use case could be like, uh, say, data scientists that want to look at like um, specifically anomalies in factories. Now, usually anomalies is like, um, there, are, there are two steps to it. Uh, and like two, two steps to data science, right? One is like having the data available, right? And then uh, doing, performing some kind of anomaly detections and then kind of like uh, fine tuning that and then truly getting to, um, to be, to build a model that will take that and automate that, right? So at the first step towards that is anomaly detection, right? Uh, to be able to take uh, corrective actions. And so this is kind of like an architecture for that where specifically you have like, um, you know, data that is um, uh, like uh, machine data coming through. And then again, combined in a, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a broker, typically what happens is like uh, you have Specifically within the factory floors, you might have uh, you might have a broker that combines the data within the factory floor, and then that needs to be bridged by a, a broker that is sitting on the enterprise. And at a HiveMQ, for example, we offer the bridge, bridge extension that bridges the data from your um, 
your broker that is sitting on your factory floor to the broker that's sitting on the enterprise. And that, that's, that is important because your, your data is so complex that it needs to be bridged at, or it needs to be consolidated at different levels, if you will, and then consolidated at an enterprise level so that you can use all of this in a way that uh, you see fit. Right, and that's I, and the rest of it is like um, again how you bring it into Azure, for example, through the Event Hub, and then either you go the analytics stream, or you go through Azure Functions, or you go through the Explorer to do Power BI. There are various ways to do it uh, once it gets to the IoT Hub, but again, providing that common mechanism to get the data in a safe, reliable, and uh, scalable way is is key, and that's what um, that's what an enterprise MQTT broker does. Uh, the other next use case uh, would be like um, you know SCADA engineers, right? So so you you might have SCADA systems in different um, different uh, factory floors. Like in this case, uh, the example is the power gen, right? Um, and instead of like managing the uh, the alarms in the in the in, in the factory premise, they might want a centralized location where they can manage these uh, these alarms and be able to um, use the data and analyze it and uh, and see what is happening over time, right? And again, the, like a broker, like a HiveMQ can consolidate all of the data and bring it into the cloud, for example. And then through Data Explorer, you can look at this alarm data and uh, break it however you want, and then figure out like what you can do with it in terms of uh, reporting and uh, analysis and so on and so forth. Uh, another use case could be, um, you know, detecting uh, some uh, okay this is yeah exactly so this command and control is like you might want to um, take some corrective actions on your factory floor from from the cloud for example right um, you know you might have a use case where um, you have um, you have a turbine running for example on your on your factory floor and uh, you you want you, you you want to bring in some external data for example some weather condition data for example right and that could be running on the on the azure cloud through like a serverless function that could then be brought in that data can be then brought into the into the premise and then that can be combined with the, the existing data that's available and some action on the the actual equipment can take place based on that combined data. And this, we call this command and control. So it's not just about bringing data from the factory floor to the cloud, but it's also the other way. And obviously while doing that, you have to have uh, security to do that, right? And uh, another uh, another use case is more long-term, right? So we, what we talked about was more what we call uh, the hot data use cases where you need to use the data right away. The other use case could be long-term, right? Again, we talked about um, data scientists doing anomaly detection. But more longer term, they want to do uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, machine learning. And to be able to do that, you want you might want to bring all of your data. You might not know exactly what you want to do with with it right away, and so you might want to store the data in a in a in a, an effective way, if you will, on say data lakes or other um, mechanisms, so that you can do that 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 analysis again, bringing it through the HiveMQ broker or uh, another uh, MQTT broker, in a in a safe, reliable, and um, secure secure way is um, is helpful in that so these are the the various use cases um, at this point we can uh, we can uh, we can do a demo and i would hand it over to kudzai to do a demo for uh, one of the use cases that we talked about and um, kudzai if you want to just uh, take over and first of all talk about the demo setup and then you can then do the demo okay all right uh, thank you so much uh, ravi for uh, such a, a fantastic uh, presentation and also, thanks to you, uh, Jeffrey, for introducing uh, our session today. Okay, so um, for now, uh, I just I, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, a hot path use case, which is one of the use cases that uh, Ravi had actually uh, outlined here. So uh, I would like us to just spend a bit of some time here on this architecture to understand uh, what sort of demo we've put together, and also to maybe try to drill down on this. Uh, uh, hot path use case, right? So this is a scenario where we have like uh, multiple production sites and we want to be able to integrate data uh, from these sites uh, in a way that makes it, uh, this data readily accessible such that we can perform queries uh, on the data and we can get the results like very fast, right? And uh, this is mainly uh, for scenarios where, for example, an engineer who might want to investigate an operational issue and solve it within minutes uh, can quickly access the data platform and the data platform will have all the recent data 
hot and ready for you to start exploring it, right? And uh, for such kind of requirements, uh, I guess you, you'd probably agree with me here that the cloud uh, is the best platform for that because it provides you with the cutting edge data analytics tools and some uh, hot storage mediums that will be helpful uh, in fulfilling uh, those requirements. So that's the reason why uh, on this architecture, we've got Azure Event Hubs, right, as the key component, because it, it allows you to stream like up to millions of events per second. And also you can configure it to like hold the data in memory. Like, so if you want it to return for like a day, if you want that data to be returned for like a, a, a week or, or, or hours or so, so you could like sort of like define for how long you want that data to be returned. So obviously that is tied to the expense of it. So the more that data is retained, because that's like some special kind of memory. So the more uh, time that data is retained, the more you pay for it. So if you like need that data for like for 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 like for the past five days or the, for the past two days, you 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 configure your 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 Azure Event Hubs uh, accordingly, right? So this this really allows you to to like build a, a really dynamic data pipeline that would enable engineers to like respond quickly to whatever operational challenges they may be uh, actually facing. Now, this is, uh, as, as, as Ravi mentioned, this is different to uh, like a cold storage medium or what you'd call a data lake, where you just like ingress the data and store it away for like weeks, months, or sometimes you could even store it away for years before you even perform any sort of analytics on it. So in this case, this is where you want to be able to like really perform analytics like in a matter of minutes, if you want to get your answers in a matter of minutes, or sometimes maybe you want to get it in a matter of, of, of hours, you want to have your data hot and ready so that you could actually uh, uh, get that kind of uh, 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 appropriate experience as far as uh, what you intend to solve on the, uh, uh, on the, on the factory is, is concerned, right? So again, like here, Azure Event Hubs is like a data retention medium that always has your data ready and it allows you to actually perform analytics as your data flies in from all the different uh, production sites in real time, you'll be able to perform uh, 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 data analytics. So obviously it allows you to connect to like a, a multitude of Azure data services. You've got your Azure Data Explorer, you've got your, your Azure event um, time series insights, uh, like this multitude of uh, data analytics tools that could, you could then forward that data to, and you'll be able to uh, perform uh, analytics uh, in real time. Now, as a matter of fact, uh, this hot storage medium that I've been just been describing right now is, is only as good as the communication protocol that provides it with data, right? So if the communication protocol is not capable of real-time event generation, and, and if it is not capable of scaling to support like thousands of these real-time event sources to feed your data pipeline, then mm. obviously you won't have uh, to, to get that kind of uh, end user experience that uh, uh, Azure Event Hubs uh, uh, offers, right? So in this architecture, this is where MQTT comes in, right? And I don't need to go into details here as, as uh, I'm sure you've heard uh, for, from the previous speaker here about the benefits that uh, MQTT provides as far as this use case is concerned, right? So in this architecture, uh, what we have is uh, we've got two MQTT enabled devices that are publishing uh, wind turbine data from two uh, geographical locations. So one is uh, located at the Opto22 headquarters in uh, Temecula, California. And uh, the other one, I've got it here with me in Landshut, Germany. So they are both uh, publishing MQTT messages to a Hive MQ uh, broker cluster that I've deployed on an Azure virtual machine. Right, so uh, the MQT broker then forwards these messages to Azure Event Hubs for hot storage using uh, a Hive MQ broker uh, Kafka extension, uh, which happens to be compatible with uh, Event Hubs. So in this instance, instead of sending that data to a Kafka cluster, we're sending it to uh, an Event Hubs uh, instance, right? So I guess now you might be asking the question like, why, why not use uh, Azure IoT Hub in this scenario? So like. Azure IoT Hub is a great service, like, but with this architecture, we wanted to create like a 100% MQT compliant data pipeline, right? Which is like not the kind of setup that you get when you like uh, using IoT Hub. And like, this is really crucial again to reiterate what uh, 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 Ravi has or, or already highlighted. It's really crucial, uh, for example, instead of having your event stream only being consumed by uh, Azure uh, cloud services, you want to be able to have other MQTT enabled clients consume the same event stream, 
right? Mm -hmm. and, and you'd also want to be flexible around uh, building your, your MQTT topic structure and all the other opportunities that you can only get from uh, devices and services that uh, fully implement the MQTT specification. And even more specifically, uh, Hive MQ Broker provides you with like a control center that gives you that uh, visibility into the health uh, of your uh, and connection uh, of your MQTT clients and also for you to be able to monitor your traffic. Right, so okay, now that you've got like a clear picture of our solution here, I think we can uh, jump into the uh, demo to show you how we actually put these pieces together. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and then uh, you can just take over. Good sir. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with a uh, production site one, right? So uh, as I mentioned, this is a site that is located uh, in, uh, in, 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 at the Opto 22 headquarters in, in California. So what you're looking at here is, the, is their demo studio. So we've got an actual uh, uh, wind turbine, like a model of, the, of, the, of, of, of a wind turbine, like which is uh, giving us the actual uh, data, right? So as you can see there, we've got a live stream of a, of, of, of a video feed that is actually uh, giving us this feed from uh, straight from the uh, demo studio there at, at Opera 22 headquarters. And basically here, if you had seen from the previous architecture, we're actually getting the turbine RPM, we're getting the, the, the wind speed, we're getting the turbine kilowatt hour, and then we're also getting the, the, the panel temperature uh, from this setup. So, um, for example, right now I could then uh, start the turbine just to show. So if I start the turbine, you should see uh, the turbine, turbine start to turn. Right. So I'm sure with latency there, you can see on the on, on, on the video feed there that you could actually see the 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 real device turning. And there you see we've got our RPMs right there that they're coming through. So these are the data points that we're actually getting from uh, uh, up to 22. Uh, 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 headquarters in California. So we're ingesting that into uh, a Hive MQ broker that is on the Azure cloud, right? So now uh, I'm just going to stop this. Okay, the next thing, uh, the next production site that I have here is, uh, is actually sitting here on my desk. So if you can see, uh, I've got this uh, Groove Rio, right? Uh, so that's also an MQTT enabled device, right? So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, actually uh, reading this uh, temperature prop, uh, collecting temperature data from this. So I'm also simulating like a turbine data. So the only real uh, information that I'm collecting for, from the physical environment is the temperature. And then the, the rest of the stuff uh, I'm, I'm actually simulating, which I'm going to uh, show uh, you in a, in a second. So we've got our two production sites, they're all generating MQTT data. So now we're sort of like uh, consolidating that to integrate it into uh, uh, this uh, data platform, which is our Azure Event Hubs. So this is, um, uh, okay, so let me just. Okay, so this is the Groove Manage uh, 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 interface where you are able to then uh, go through it and, and configure the IOs and, and stuff like that. So if you go to the IO channels there, you can see that I've got my temperature uh, when uh, it's actually reading 30, 32 degrees Celsius uh, currently, right? So now uh, to, to actually send this information out, I'm using Node-RED. So this Node-RED is the one that is actually acting as my MQTT client in this instance, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open the Node-RED editor. Okay, so this is the flow that is giving us our MQTT uh, data. So as you can see here, I've got a, a, a node that is uh, collecting the temperature from this analog channel, and then the rest of the stuff, I'm actually uh, simulating this data uh, using these uh, nodes uh, that allow us to simulate it. And then here, as for temperature, uh, you can see that I'm actually converting that temperature to Fahrenheit uh, because our friends there in, uh, in, in, in California actually have their temperature in Fahrenheit. So we kind of want to have that as the, uh, in, in, in kind of the, the same range. And then I'm joining all of that uh, data into a JSON uh, payload. And then from there, I'm publishing it to, uh, 
to my Hive MQ uh, 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 cluster, right? So now I'm publishing it to this uh, topic namespace Interfactory Germany uh, Landsuit. Okay, so we've got our data here uh, on, on the. Okay, so we've got our data coming through from our Groove Rio here. So now uh, I think we need to go ahead and uh, look at how to actually deploy the, uh, the broker cluster. Okay, so I'm just going to try and minimize this. Okay, so this is the GitHub repo that uh, has got the instructions on how you can actually deploy a Hive MQ broker cluster on Azure. So this is basically a, a button, just one simple button. If you click it, it will take you to Azure, uh, to, to your Azure portal. And there you'll be able to configure things like how many nodes do you want to actually have on that uh, 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 broker cluster. So obviously if you're going for like more redundancy, if you like you want to have some kind of failover a mechanism, if you, you believe that you're going to be uh, getting like a, a lot of clients, so you'd want to have like uh, more nodes. So for this demo, I only have like one node to, 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 to keep it simple, right? So once you click this, it will take you to your uh, Azure platform where you then be able to actually configure things like your the, the username of your virtual machine and uh, all the other login details. So I'll just go to my, uh, to my Azure portal here, just to show you. Okay, so here, as you can see, I've got a, a, a virtual machine, right? So this is uh, the virtual machine that was installed uh, during the time when I was actually deploying this uh, IFMQ uh, uh, broker cluster, right? So now on this virtual machine, you also get what is called a, a load balancer. So in, in, in the event that you've got like more than one node, you, you want to have like one IP address, like so everything is actually abstracted away from you. You, all, you, you want to be able to only deal with the only one endpoint, like so you get only one IP address. So your load balancer sort of like manages the distribution of your, of, 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 of your workloads across all the different clusters that you'd have uh, configured in that instance. Okay, so next thing uh, that I have here is to show you all this information coming in. Okay, so what you're actually looking at on the screen here is an mqtt.fx. So this is like a test client to see if we're actually uh, publishing uh, messages, mqtt messages to uh, the Hive MQ uh, broker cluster. So I've already configured it with the information from my uh, broker cluster. So what you're looking at here is actually JSON payloads. So the other one, as you can see, we have a location, Temecula, and then the other payload that is coming through has got the location as Lansuit. So I'm actually using this uh, location as, as, as a partition key to actually then filter through the data on Azure Event Hubs, as you will see uh, uh, shortly. Okay, so I'll just go back to this browser here. So, uh, what you're looking at here is the Hive MQ control center, which I mentioned uh, earlier. So with this control center, as you can see, it gives you a dashboard for you to troubleshoot your, your, your traffic, to see the, 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 the clients that are connected and do all sorts of things like your manage your licenses and, and so forth. So this sort of like gives you the kind of visibility that you wouldn't normally get from like a, 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 a gateway, like a, a, a gateway like your IoT hub. Like, so, here you get all your information as far as the health or, and, and, and connection status of your MQTT network uh, is concerned, right? Okay, now let's go back to the Azure portal to show you how my uh, event hubs is, is configured. Okay, so here is my other uh, Azure uh, event hubs. 
uh, uh, namespace here. So this is the Hive MQ demo, right? So I've already uh, created this. So it's a simple process for you to create uh, a, a, an Azure Event Hubs uh, 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 namespace. So here, as you can see, I've got my message retention to three days, meaning I'll hold all the data for three days. After three days, it starts discarding that data and then writing over uh, that data. So it can only give me three days of, of, of worth of data. So this is up to you to then configure that uh, however you, you, you want it. And then this here is my event hubs uh, uh, instance. Right. So under this instance, this is where then you can actually uh, create a, a consumer group. So like basically a consumer group, this is where we're saying Azure Event Hubs uh, is actually capable of supplying a lot of Azure data services. Right. So now you don't want all your data services actually feeding off of one stream. So what you do is like you create a consumer group. So a consumer group, like you have got an event stream that is dedicated to one Azure data service. So like for example, here I've got my event hubs to TSI. Uh, uh, consumer group. So I know that I'm, I, I'm getting all of that feed uninterrupted on my Azure Time Series uh, uh, Insights uh, data platform. Right now, uh, you, you must be asking to say, how does this data end up on the uh, event hubs? Like we've got the Hive MQ broker and then we've got uh, an Azure event hubs. What's the connection there? So as I explained, we've got like a, a Hive MQ uh, Kafka uh, extension which allows us to connect the broker to Azure Event Hubs. And for that, it's a simple configuration uh, 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 file that you actually need to, to, to configure to make sure that you send your data to, um, to, 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 to your Azure Event Hubs uh, namespace. So as you can see here, I've got like a connection string from my uh, HiveMQ demo, uh, Azure Event Hubs uh, namespace. And then also here, I've got my, um, uh, uh, what you call this, the, the topic. So like I'm, I, I'm publishing Interfactory uh, uh, slash Germany slash shoot. So here, so that I can get also the information that is published from like our our, our demo there at, at, at Opto22 headquarters. I'm only using a, a pound sign to get all the information that is published under Interfactory uh, 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 topic, right? So this is a, a simple configuration file that you, 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 you actually do, you, you, you configure on your uh, uh, IFMQ uh, uh, Kafka extension to ensure that it sends all of that information under this topic to your Azure Event Hubs uh, uh, namespace, right? Okay, so I'm going to go back here to my uh, time series insights. So basically, this is the data plot platform that uh, we're looking at. So this is the, the, all the information that is coming through uh, in real time from our two production sites. So because this is coming through from Azure Event Hubs, it allows us to actually operate on this data in real time, like in a very fast fashion, right? So here, as you can see, I can just move this uh, 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 slider here to actually get the more recent data. So as you can see, this is updating very fast. So as you can see here, 1728, which is the time currently here in a, uh, 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 land suit. So this data is, as you actually act on the data, you actually get to see uh, all of that information uh, in real time. So now if I uh, just come here and let's move this on the side. So if I can just like delete these uh, trends. So like, as I explained, this is, I'm using this as a partition key, the location. So this is once you use that, when you're configuring your time series insights, you actually specify a partition key to say, how do you want to view a data, right? So here I've used the, the location of that data as the partition key. So I can go to say Temecula, and then I can see all the, 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 the data points that I'm actually receiving from there. So I can choose to say, I want to see the turbine uh, kilowatt, right? I want to see the turbine RPMs. I want to see the wind speed, right? And then I can say, I also want to see the temperature and then I can add that. And then it will load those events onto my uh, time series insights platform. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our events here. So I can go and say, uh, Landsuit, uh, what do I want to add from here? I can take the same thing, uh, turbine RPM, uh, temperature, kilowatt, and uh, the wind speed. And then I can also add that to uh, my time series uh, platform, right? 
So this is the data that we're actually looking at that is coming from all these uh, different uh, uh, areas. So here, for example, you can see we've got uh, Temecula. Uh, uh, let me see if I can identify. Okay, so here you can see we've got our RPM actually reading zero right now coming from Temecula because I've actually had it stopped. I've stopped that turbine. But if you can actually look back here, you can see the point where I actually started it. So you can see it was running here. So I could actually go back and run it. And then we see uh, that data actually coming through quite fast. Okay, if only I can find my browser screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'll go back here, right? And then I'll start my turbine. Okay, so we've got our turbine uh, running here. So which means we're getting our uh, RPM that is being transmitted to uh, our Hive MQ broker on Azure. So all of that information is gonna go through our uh, data pipeline to the Hive MQ broker, and then it's going to be forwarded to uh, event hubs uh, using our Kafka extension. And then finally, it's going to uh, land onto the uh, Time Series uh, Insights data platform. Okay, so we're just going to see if we can see our, our PMs. Okay, so you see we're now starting to see that uh, our PMs, so now it's reading 31, which is actually the other PMs that were uh, actually generating on the on the edge device there. So basically that sums up our demo. So as you can see, this really gives you the access to actually dig into your data in, 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 in near real time. So if you've got like a problem as an engineer in, the, uh, in, in a process plant or wherever you are actually operating, you're able to dig into this data in a matter of minutes and actually get some insights because you've got access to these uh, sophisticated tools. Like there's so much that you could actually do on this time series insights platform. You can do some filtering, you can do some merging of the data, you can create models from the data. Like there's mm -hmm. so much that you can do there and all with uh, data that is coming in, in, in real time. Right. Okay, so that uh, brings us to the uh, end of uh, this demo. So I'll, I'll bring it back to you, uh, Jayashree. Thank you so much again. Uh... Kudzai, that was a great demo. Jeshi, Thank you let me, so much, uh, Kudzai. Thank you, Ravi. That was a fantastic uh, demo, Kudzai. Let me just, I, uh, yep, Ravi, go ahead. Yes, I was just going to bring back the, um, the uh, screen that we had before. And then we can, uh, if you want to talk through the, the rest of the things, next steps, Jeshi. Yep, so we already have a white paper uh, around the use cases which Ravi was talking about. So we will be sharing all these resources and links over the email. We will be also sharing the recording of this uh, webinar. You also can refer to these resources. Um, uh, so I think some of you were asking how to connect HiveMQ to Azure Event Hubs. We already have a blog post on that. So you can refer it to um, these resources later. So uh, I think we will um, get the Q&A going. There are a lot of interesting questions uh, coming yes. in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before uh, we kick off the q and I would like to launch the poll. I request all the attendees and participants to participate. Yeah. Yep, the poll is up. Uh, please do participate. And parallelly, we will um, start the Q&A. Uh, so, um, so Ron is asking, uh, thanks Ron for interacting and sharing your feedback. 
so Ron is asking, is MQTT an error correcting packet passing protocol? I have used AX25 over wireless ham radio channels since 1986. So, um, Kudzai, do you want to take this? Yeah, so, so basically what MQTT does, MQTT is, a, is an application uh, a layer protocol, right? So, but it, 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 it works on a TCIP. So a lot of error uh, correction is done at the TCP IP level, right? So whatever other uh, error detection mechanisms that you might want to do, you're also actually open to implement them at the application level. Otherwise it runs on that TCP IP uh, 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 connection, which does all those uh, error checking uh, mechanisms for you, but you're also able to perform it at application level. Good. Thank you, Kudzai. Yeah. Yeah, Jesse, because Ron had many questions, uh, maybe we can try to answer all of his questions and then he can come back live maybe if um, if he hasn't gotten any questions answered. Yep, I think there are like two feedback and uh, there is one more question from uh, Ron. Uh, he's asking besides AI and sensing full PID control system design built as possible. What if I have say, um, Beagle Bone Black as client side. Is it tied down to specific cloud platforms or can I use more than one at a time? Uh, okay, so I, I, I didn't quite get that question. Uh, I don't know, I do, think, you, do, do you mind repeating it? Uh, maybe I can unmute uh, Ron okay. and uh, we could get the context um, better. Uh, just give me a minute. Uh, looks like Ron is. And while you do that, I can I can take a stab at this, right? Because what I see here, I don't know the be uh, beagle bone black as a client, but I think like the question is more of like, can can this system allow you to talk to multiple cloud platforms? The answer is yes, right? Because that's kind of like um, what a full featured MQTT broker allows you to do, where you can talk to any system. Obviously, Azure, if you want to do Azure related uh, functions. But you should also be able to talk to other cloud pl platforms like Kafka and others if you want to do specific things there, if you will, right? So ours is a very flexible platform. Our extensions provides you the ability to talk to multiple different platforms. But maybe Ron can uh, jump in and... Uh, looks like uh, Ron is not there in the session. So that's, I think we, right. will, we can take this offline and we can have a follow-up with him uh, later. Okay. Cool. Um, Arunagiri is asking, uh, factories who have multiple protocols like TCP IP, field pass, IO, and much more, how easy or tough is it, or is it possible to get them converted to MQTT? Okay, so, so it basically this uh, boils down to the kind of uh, infrastructure that you have uh, in your factory floor. But something as simple as a gateway, as I've shown here, like for example, if, the, if, if, if your intention is to like collect data and publish it out, you could use something as simple as Node-RED. Like literally you could just download Node-RED whether on a PC or, or if it's running on your, if you like, if you've got a PC, if you don't like to have a, a gateway, right? You could host Node-RED and then Node-RED would act as your client and it will be publishing MQTT messages on one end. And then on the other end, Node-RED actually allows you to, to, to actually like in, install a lot of packets that allow you to read uh, information from uh, machines like yeah, your PLC, like your Siemens, your, your, your Modbus, your OPC UA. Like you can possibly find any uh, packet for, for any device that you can find on the factory floor on Node-RED. So that's a, like a simple example of how simple it is for you to actually integrate uh, 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 data from what you'd call your legacy equipment into MQTT. So like maybe if you want to do custom scripting, you could also do that because these MQTT clients for things like your Python, your, 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 your Node.js, right? So also you could use things like gateways that are being sold. And more importantly, you can have something like a, 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 an Opto22, right? Like a Groove right. Rio, for example. It allows you to actually connect directly. Like uh, if I, I, I think the, the latest one that they actually came up with actually embeds uh, Ignition Edge, right? So right. as you know, Ignition Edge mm -hmm. has a lot of drivers. So that will give you like a robust way of connecting it and also allow you to even uh, uh, install something as simple as Node-RED. So it's, it's quite simple. 
depending okay. obviously on the, the kind of infrastructure that you have on your, on your factory. Yeah. And Kudza, if I can add, it's also implementation specific because obviously you can you can have a case for using a gateway because if you have like a very complex system of multiple different systems that need to be consolidated, you pro you would need a gateway. But if it's a very simple system, for example, and the system is capable of uh, having MQTT, for example, right? We we know a lot of the new devices that are coming out have MQTT clients. You we could possibly like interact directly with with that as well or an MQTT broker can interact directly with that as well. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Ravi. Thanks, Kudzai. Uh, I'll move on to the next question. Bart is asking, um, does HiveMQ has a solution to manage a fleet of devices? As you mentioned uh, in your answer to Jagat, there is support for X509 certs. Which APIs are available to support this during manufacturing? For example, in a production batch of 500 devices per month. Good do you want to take uh, that? Or? Okay, so so uh, I think there was like, can you can you if you don't mind recapping that, Jeshri? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, does HiveMQ has a solution to manage a fleet of devices? As you, um, there is support for X509 certs. Which APIs are available to support this during manufacturing? For example, in a production batch of 500 devices per month. Okay, I so, okay, sure, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So, I just had a, a quick thought on this, right? Uh, and I, I was the one that responded to Jagat's uh, question on specifically on security. And uh, basically the question here is that, okay, that's great. Is there an API that's available to implement the security in manufacturing? And the answer is yes, right? One of the things that we do from a, a broker perspective is um, not just have our own security posture. We understand that IT teams, for example, have their own kind of like within, within organizations have their own security postures and they wouldn't want to have like a separate security posture when it comes to implementing a, a like a broker, for example, right? So we do like a security extension as an API, right? As an extension, we offer that where you could actually use your own existing security posture to implement security on the broker, right? Meaning like you could make this uh, an asset in your system exactly like how you would use other IT assets, making it really easy for you. Uh, when it comes to devices, I think like uh, from our perspective, right? I mean, we started in the connector car space where you have millions of connections that are happening at the same time. So yeah, we absolutely can support like uh, 500 plus devices um, or more, right? At the same time. Could I, if you want to just um, add your thoughts on that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've already summed it up there. Basically with MQTT, the, 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 the biggest advantage is that it actually lets you, like your IT department decide how they want to handle security. Exactly. Like that's, that's, that's the beauty of it. You, 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 you literally just focus on the operation side and whatever your IT side gives and say, this is our security policies, you work on that because it does, it does not define a security protocol. It works on whatever uh, uh, mechanisms you've got under the TCIP. So all the certification, everything will be managed uh, on the, uh, by your IT team. And you also don't need to actually tell them to actually open some ports on the firewalls because all the communication is actually uh, coming from the edge going to the cloud. So you can pretty much just let your IT department handle all the security related concerns. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Kudzai. Thanks, Ravi. So Bart, I, I can see Bart online. Maybe I can unmute him uh, to get more context. Hey, Bart. Hello. Uh, hey, Bart. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think the answer was, uh, was uh, clear enough. Um, basically, what I was looking for is um, to um, to register new devices, uh, mm -hmm. so to generate new certificates. Um, how that would be handled? Do you have APIs for that? Okay, so that's like a de device management level. So we like yeah. So we we don't like have that at device management level where you could actually manage like those those fleets. I think if if I understand your question that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bart. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Kutzai. I'll move on to the next question. 
Sayan is asking, is there any way to connect a SAP into HiveMQ? If yes, how can I bring SAP data into HiveMQ? Yeah, Cyan is um, somebody that we've been talking to recently. So Cyan, thank you so much for uh, the question. Um, so there are multiple ways to do it. And I think we've been kind of like discussing it uh, offline, right? One way is to use some kind of like a, like a mechanism that we talked about, which also includes gateways and other devices that can talk to these databases and present the data in like a, in a format that's understood, like have an MQTT client present the data to us that we can we can we can communicate with and then the, the, the data can be pub published right um, SAP itself actually has started to do some something in this regard um, I believe um, so that can be explored as well but the, the thing the thing is it all depends on your system and how complex or how simple it is right because if you have to go to each of your application and start implementing this one by one I think things can easily start getting complicated if it's just one or two systems that's fine you can do it but when you when you have like multiple systems, this is where something like a high byte that we've been talking about or uh, Kepware, for example, that can help you do the consolidation and expose the data in a format that uh, is available in, an, in a simple and easy way. Opto22 is another option that you can look into um, uh, because we uh, that, that there is one pipeline exposure, right? Uh, like from an MQTT perspective for, to us, and that's more much more efficient. Cool. Thanks, Ravi. Thanks, Sayan. Uh, I think um, it's, it's, it's a question as well as a feedback. Junaid uh, is actually looking for a demo of how to employ X.509 uh, certificate using HiveMQ MQTT broker, especially for LoRaWAN network. Uh, Junaid, uh, we have made a note. Uh, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to provide you with a demo. So stay yeah. tuned. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we can. Uh, provide him a link to our previous webinar, which was all about security that talks about this, but it, it didn't include a demo, but we can certainly uh, make note of it and uh, get back to you once we have a demo. Yep, yep. Um, I think um, Hari has a follow-up question on the SAP topic. What is the use case to push relational database data or enterprise data via MQTT broker? Again, it's very use case specific, right? I mean, if you have um, data, like if you want to combine your machine data coming from your factory machines with your, um, say, controls data coming from your um, from your SCADA system with the business data or other enterprise data coming from SAP and MES systems to be able to optimize your production, for example, right? That would be one of the use cases. But there are many, many, many other use cases where you want to bring in data from different systems together so you can then make it available for advanced use cases like AI, ML, for whatever use cases, maybe production planning, forecasting, couple that comes to mind, optimizing your supply chain. Again, those are, those are common use cases. Awesome, thanks Ravi. So Hari is online. Maybe I can unmute him once to get more context of what he was looking for. Hari, do you, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, sure. Thank, thanks again. Uh, fantastic demo. I guess my question was, MQTT is more for unreliable environments. And most of these relational enterprise data, people would use like Kafka or normal mm -hmm. enterprise integration patterns. Um, right. So if I want to integrate multiple sources, I would do it using the traditional integration patterns. So that was the root of my question, but I, right. I think I, I, I get the general idea from Ravi. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Hari. Okay, uh, so there's one more question on uh, IEC 61850 protocol substation. Uh, so um, the question is IEC 61850 protocol substation is able to be pushed to the cloud? Yeah, so I, I, I think that, that would also it can be pushed. So this also depends on the gateway, like the, the, the gateway mechanism that you, you have there to say, what sort of gateway mechanism uh, do, do you have available in your data infrastructure, right? Because the idea really about MQTT is to say, if you are operating in an environment where you've got protocols that cannot be connected directly uh, to the cloud using MQTT, typically you'd have a system that converts that protocol uh, uh, on one end and then publishes it to the cloud on the other. So if, if it so happens that 
you are in a situation where your protocol really doesn't have a gateway out there. No device can talk to it. You could actually even look at building your own uh, custom script because there's so many uh, clients from, from so many programming languages uh, that you could actually uh, build into that solution to be able to push that into, into the cloud via MQTTT. So it all depends about what's available to you as far as gateways are concerned. So if you've got uh, 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 systems that are, are, are readily available, when you've got a gateway like an Opto22 that connects directly to those devices, it can collect that information. Uh, if you've got that on a, on, a, on a gateway, again, like Ignition Edge that can be hosted on such a device, you just look through the list to see if it's not supported. If it's not supported in any of all those uh, uh, gateways, then you could. We also have an option of actually building a, a, a custom a script that sends that message, message up to the cloud. Cool. Thanks, Kudzai. I will move on to uh, next question. So it's buried in between the chats. So Vincent is looking for how to connect Azure uh, event hubs. Also, he has questions around X, X.409 certificates. So Vincent is, uh, I can see him online. He's there in the session. Maybe I can unmute. We can get more um, context from him. Vincent, yeah. I have unmuted you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Can you hear yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to to know because your demo um, shows the, the connection to Azure Event Hub, which is great uh, and uh, real time. Um, uh, so that's wonderful. And uh, um, many people are asking in production, we want to enroll the enrollment phase when you want to enroll uh, 500 devices uh, right from the factory and add uh, on those devices certificates, so X509 certificates. How uh, does that work? Do, is it a part of the uh, life cycle that you provide or is it up to us to provide the, the management of such a thing? Because for example, Azure uh, works with Azure DPS along with Azure um, IoT Hub. But if we don't, take that into account and we connect directly to Azure Event Hub, we are missing quite a lot of the IoT features functionality from Azure. How, what are the best practices uh, with that, that respect? For example, when a certificate X509 will expire, the, the intelligence of the device could say, okay, hey, my, my certificate will expire. Uh, Azure DPS, can you give me the, the next uh, X509 certificate, please, that will expire in two years. Uh, mm -hmm. So all this complex life cycle has been taken into account by Microsoft. But if we shortcut this and send directly to an event hub, um, we're missing quite a lot of features. How yeah. can we do yeah. with a Hive MQ? Yeah, so um, obviously, no, none of us are security experts here, uh, Vincent, but uh, we can certainly say that we fully comply with all of the requirements that's needed to connect to Azure IoT Hub, whatever security mm -hmm. postures it's, it, it needs, which includes the X509 certificates. Now, what I don't fully uh, understand is how exactly it's implemented within uh, HiveMQ. We can, we can certainly go back and we can provide you further information. Yes, please. Uh, yes. Yeah. That will... Because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a... Of, on a miniature of a factory and I'm doing yes. a training. So yes. I'll, I'll be glad to, to incorporate uh, HiveMQ in my, right. in my factory right. so that I can demonstrate how does that work uh, along with Azure. Yes, that would be wonderful. Yes, yes, I, I'll share. Uh, we actually have like an Azure specific page on our website. I'll, I'll obviously we'll share that with you right away. Mm -hmm. But then uh, we'll have specifically we'll follow up on the question that you asked and get you a lot more details around that. Yes, because a lot of people are expecting these those features. That's a yes. game changer, uh, especially with Azure DPS uh, that uh, manages the the life cycle. And uh, the the question you had in the past, a few few questions ago, uh, it all revolves around that. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Thank you again okay, for your. Cool. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Vincent. We will follow up with you later. Uh, we are really top of the hour. 
uh, we will address uh, the rest of the questions um, either over email or you can reach out to us. The contacts will be shared with you all. There is always HiveMQ community forum, which you can reach out to. So um, it has been really nice to have you all and see you all in the next session. Thanks, Kudza, and thanks, Ravi, again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good see day. See you all in the next session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.